which I'll do now. <laughs> and uh, it will be available afterwards if you want to send it out to your colleagues and all that kind of stuff. Uh, today we are going to be talking about a use case that is not a very common use case, to be totally honest, uh, when it comes to conversational AI and NLP. For those of you that have been listening to VUX World and tuning in over the last four and a half years, you'll know that anything that brings people utility is what we are all about. Things that make people's lives easier, things that make businesses' lives easier is where the real value of this technology is. And we talk a lot about you know, conversational automation on the front end of things like call centers or mobile apps where voice and conversational AI is being used to make their lives easier for customers. There's all kinds of use cases where conversational intelligence can be used within the enterprise, within call centers to extract insights, things like conversational intent, things like uh, you know, diarization speaker diarization topic topic summarization, you know, sentiment analysis, voice biometrics. There's a whole bunch of stuff that exists that's adding real value, call routing and IVRs. But it's all adding value to the customer, which is great because what's good for the customer is good for the business. But we don't really hear a terrible amount of use cases where this technology is being used to help agents within the call center environment. And today, that's exactly what we're going to get into. By the time you leave this webinar, you will be more than familiar with some of the core challenges that call centers are facing, and agents in particular. You'll be familiar with the kind of technological solutions that exist around agent assist capabilities and how they can make agents more, more productive and thus improve your customer experience. As I mentioned, this webinar is, is presented by Core AI. We're going to be joined in just one moment by the CEO of Core AI, serial entrepreneur Raj Kaneru, and he's going to be walking you through some of the core agent assist considerations and a little bit about core ai and really the value of agent assist for your business then we're going to get into a, an interview style discussion between me and raj if any of you have been tuning into vux world over the years you'll be familiar with that kind of format at any point in time please do ask questions there's some questions in q a in uh, the in zoom here just click on the q a box ask a question and we will either ask it there and then to raj uh, or we'll save it until the end and we'll have some time at the end definitely for questions the last Last webinar we did, there were so many questions that we ended up staying back for 20 minutes. Uh, so, so do get your questions in. Uh, now, before I welcome Raj uh, onto the stage, a uh, quick word about Core AI. Now, if you've been with your head kind of or ears against the floor, paying attention to the conversational AI industry and the developments that are happening within this space, you'll have no doubt come across Core AI. In the recent Gartner Magic Quadrant analysis of enterprise conversational AI platforms, Core AI was labeled a leader in that quadrant. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with what that is, essentially Gartner, which I'm sure you're familiar with, do some pretty rigorous analysis on all of the kind of leading enterprise conversational AI platforms. And to get through the process to even be listed is uh, is difficult enough, but to be crowned a leader means that you are doing a hell of a lot of things right. It means that you are covering multiple channel deployments with a whole range of different types of solutions. It means that you've got robust technology that is fit for enterprise level security and also compliance as well as being able to manage the scale that enterprises need as well. And it means that you've got customers. And so Core AI is doing all of the right things and I'm delighted to welcome the CEO Raj Kaneru onto the webinar right now. Raj, welcome. Hey Kane, thank you. Good day everyone. Good to meet you. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Uh, thank you for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Core AI, as I mentioned, is on fire at the moment. Uh, for those, I'll kind of give everyone a bit of an insight into Core AI just there, but for those that maybe are not familiar, it's always nicer to hear it from the folks who are kind of building the empire, so to speak. So I wonder if you can shed a bit of light and tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about Core AI. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, Core AI is an eight-year-old company. We're squarely focused on conversational AI. Uh, we believe that the next interface to computers is conversation-led and natural language-led. So that brings a lot of challenges and opportunities to the table. Challenges for technologists like us to make it, an, make it a technology that's easily deployable by large enterprises and small enterprises, but bring the pleasure of being able to converse with the brand, with the applications or that the enterprise puts out in natural language and be able to get service, you know, buy something or be able to get up, get information, get answers to questions. So that is what we're all about, you know, providing the technology and the platforms to make it easy for a conversational interface to be deployable in multiple channels by an enterprise 
you know, to their customers, to their employees, to their partners, and other stakeholders. Mm. Go on. So, I mean, uh, we came at this from a very technology-focused angle. We built out a platform at the very beginning, which is in version 9.3 right now. We believe it's the broadest and deepest platform on the planet to be able to build, you know, design, build, train, test, deploy, manage and measure conversational AI, virtual assistants and 35 different channels that we support. We come from a wealth of experience from a different world, the mobile world, uh, where I founded a company called Kony, which was the leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant again for mobile application development back in the day. And we saw the the interest uh, both by consumers and by enterprises to deploy applications on mobile, which was the new interface at the time coming from the web world. So we took those learnings to be able to bring this new technology uh, to change how people interact with machines. So there's a lot of history behind, you know, and learnings behind what we have uh, attempted to do here. And, you know, the journey goes on, but there's, there's a lot of interesting use cases that come to bear every day. And it's amazing how the world is adopting conversational AI in general. It really is. It's just absolutely taken off, isn't it? Why Why focus? We'll get on to the agent assist definitely in just a minute, but I'm curious to know why is the enterprise such a kind of, you know, melting pot for, of potential for this technology. I mean, Core AI could have been, you know, enabling Alexa skill building. It could have been enabling, I don't know, you know, MRI scanning machines with voice capabilities, whatever the case. There's lots of other areas that you could play. Why is the enterprise, and particularly contact centers, why is the opportunity so great there? Well, I mean, if you look at the enterprise, they have a myriad of systems now. Used to be that, you know, 15, 20 years ago, the enterprise was trying to deploy integrated systems like ERP systems or standardize on certain CRM systems. But now I think the world has gone back to best of breed to a lot to, to a large extent, which means there are integration challenges, but also experience challenges. And enterprises attempt to put out, you know, most importantly, customer experiences that make it easy for the customer to buy and uh, buy from them and support them. But they have a lot of focus on employee experiences because when you look at these larger enterprises or even a mid-sized enterprise, making data available to the employees to do their jobs and be efficient is a key metric. And beyond that, there are supplier experiences that become important, especially given what we've seen with COVID and the supply chain problems the world has come to see for, uh, for the first time in this, in this intensity. So experiences are things that an enterprise worries about, essentially in general. And optimizing that experience is a key consideration. Optimization brings automation, which brings satisfaction, which brings you know higher revenue. And most importantly, the speed of business you know, happening improves significantly. Your sales come in faster, you're able to service your customer faster, you're going to be able, you're going to, be able to onboard an employee faster and make him or her productive. And that's the ultimate result I think an enterprise is always attempting to do. And this technology make, brings you know, those capabilities or, or those um, objectives you know, more achievable than you know, traditional UI-based application interfaces that take a long time to develop. You know, the users have to learn them. And then it's, there's a maintenance headache and there's an integration headache at the end of the day. Mm, mm, absolutely. There's definitely uh, something to be said for convenience and speed, accessibility, um, and you put that in the hands of kind of employees as well, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And it's like, it's crazy. The call center is, isn't actually too different from like, you know, blue collar office workers where um, the first, fa first time I discovered dictation, was like a total game changer. Like now I, I dictate all my emails, I dictate all my text messages and all that kind of stuff. And even when I write something, I dictate it first and I'll clean it up. And it's like, well, I started to think that I used to get paid, like, you know, not, not a small amount of money for what a large part was sitting and typing, typing emails. 
I know that's a really simple thing, just dictation. There's no system automation there. There's nothing else. There's nothing to help me my work in life apart from just dictating. Yet people are getting paid all over the world to sit and dictate, to sit and write emails rather. So it's it's like that's just scratching the surface of the technology, you know. So the opportunities are huge. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I mean, look. I think most people, whether you're a customer, or an employee, or a partner, whatever it may be, basically do three things with uh, the data. They want answers to questions, basically. They want to be able to act, get access to information, and they want to do a transaction. So most of the time, as you just said, Kane, you know, when you get into email, you consume more email than you actually create. So we're all large consumers of data. We're less creators of data, essentially. So when you think about the enterprise trying to answer questions for an employee or for uh, a customer or give them access to information, either through a search application or through other types of applications, and then finally make it very easy for people to transact. I mean, you just said to me, Kane, you come from the world of UX design, mm. basically. I mean, so much time and energy goes into how do we make the onboarding simpler for a, for an application you know how do we not clutter the screen with too many things so that you know the consumer or the user of the application is goal focused and is able to get instant gratification you know if that's because we are basing our life around a ui you know we are basing our life around i see i click i touch and i navigate but when we were children you know, when we were babies, the first thing we learned was language. I mean, I communicate with you in language. And there's a there's the physical element of it, but much of it is spoken word or written text, essentially. So conversational AI, you know, removes that concept of screens and navigation and all these other things and makes the goal achievement much easier with natural language, which is answer a question, get me the information I need, enable me to transact, you know, in easy fashion. And that's the value that we're trying to bring to bear. Mm, mm, nice. Um, cool. That's That makes perfect sense. Um, we've got a question which you might have saw pop up there uh, from Mike Stokes. We'll get onto that question in, in a moment, Mike, when, when the time is right. But let's get into this agent assist uh topic then that we've been talking about. I know you've got a few slides here that, that you were going to share, um, so perhaps we'll get into that just now. Uh, and feel free, Raj, tell me as you as you want to move on. Um, and yeah, we'll yep. kind of run through these slides. And, and as we go through, uh, by the way, ladies and gents, boys and girls, any questions that you have throughout this, please do stick them in the Q&A. Mike's already got a question in there, which we will get to, Mike. Um, but please do, uh, please do see your questions in there. If it's relevant to ask them as we go along, we definitely will do. Otherwise, we'll we'll come to that towards the end but uh, yeah i mean yeah. The, the top yeah go ahead sorry okay no go on go on yeah so the topic i wanted to focus on today is a topic that has not received much creativity over the years with more traditional contact center technology which is the concept of how do we make the agent more efficient i mean in today's world where hiring is so difficult and you know people are quitting their jobs the great resignation is going on and people want to work from home and in general, you know, employee experience and in this case, agent experience is a crucial factor for the success of a company. You know, there's been very little work being done to understand what does the agent deal with? I mean, he obviously, he or she obviously deals with customers, inbound requests, basically. But then what are the elements that go into what the agent does in their job? And usually the focus is, let's give them some canned responses. Let's give them knowledge bases that they can search and give an answer to a customer. But that leads to a lot of repetitive work, a lot of painful work for the agent, basically. And agents are not able to focus on the customer problem or you know, engaging with the customer because the thing brands forget is there may be a blue collar worker but they represent your, your brand. You may go put an put a ad on Super Bowl and tell people how great your company is, but when the customer calls your contact center, that's when they actually experience your brand, basically. Mm. So agents are the frontline workers who represent your brand. So the, the focus that we brought 
to the table here is how do we make that aging better? How do we make their life easier and therefore make them more efficient in servicing customers and therefore improving the enterprise value or the brand value? Mm. So if you go to the next slide, Uh, this is more about my background. We talked about it a little bit. We can skip that. Uh, go to the next one. Well, customers, when we polled customers, you know, and asked them what do they want, customers of an enterprise want some simple things. They want their information quickly. They want the resolution quickly. That's why in the UI world, we focus so much on remove the clutter, make it simple and easy, and things like that. The same thing when the caller calls it call center, or they get on a chat with the call center. You know, don't waste my time, give me my answer quickly, let me do my transaction quickly, and move on. You know, that's a big one. Second one is, they want to talk to somebody who is human-like. They don't want to talk to a rude agent, they don't want to talk to a, you know, irate agent. They want to talk to an agent, talk about the weather, talk about the birthday they celebrated, whatever, and then be able to have a pleasurable experience. And then, we're all 24-7 today. Basically, we want the brands and enterprises we deal with to be available 24-7. I mean, it's ridiculous that I call a call contact center and they say, call us during 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, <laughs> essentially. Well, you call, know what? I only that... have time on the weekend. Yeah, Basically, call us at the only time that you can't actually make a phone call because most people are working. <laughs> exactly. And, and now you have, you know, audiences from the seniors to the Gen X and everybody in between. And they have different that they spend their time in. So the brand has to be in those channels. Basically, that's a key, key element. And lastly, why do I need to call you? If, my, if I'm late on my bill, proactively give me a payment plan, basically. If I, if, if, I know, if I know there's an outage, basically, let me know proactively and tell me when it's going to be resolved, essentially. So there's a lot of information the enterprise has, but proactively reaching out to customers basically is not something the enterprise does, you know, to resolve issues so that the customer is not wasting their time calling them to find out, you know, what they're going to do about it, essentially. Mm. So these are the things customers think about when they think about service or sales. But actually, they think about that when they think about the brand. You know, the last few times I called my, my cell phone provider, you know, gave me such an disturbed experience that even though I need to call them to change something, I procrastinate because I know it's going to take me an hour of my life, you know, dealing with them on their contact center. So in my mind, that cell phone provider's brand is a poor brand. If somebody gives, tells me that there's a better cell phone provider, basically I'll shift tomorrow, hmm. basically. So it really affects your brand in a big, big way. And we need, and, and enterprises need to be cognizant of these elements. If you go to the next slide, okay. So it shows the value of that, of, of the importance of customer experience, doesn't it? I mean, we talk about customer experience being, um, it often gets spoke of in the sense of like app development and stuff like that, giving people a good experience. But the reality is that, you know, calling the call center, having a negative experience, the, the customer experience is, for most organizations, actually the only thing you can differentiate on, isn't it? A cell phone provider, as long as it connects calls and gives you data, it's neither here nor there, so it doesn't really matter who they exactly. are. The, the customer experience is the only thing, really, that a lot of companies have, isn't it, to differentiate or to make customers happy? Absolutely, and it's and the customer experience is not a single touch point. It's mm. not that you have a pretty website to sell your wares. You know, it is all these different touch points that you see on the screen. You know, they did not get an answer through the chatbot, and they're forced to call. Now you, the irritation goes up, and then they're forced to wait, wait on hold or you stick them in an IVR, which like doesn't understand what you want and puts you through menu hell, if you will. And finally they get the get to an agent and they're like, oh, great. Now I can talk to a human, basically. But then the agent is not enabled to be able to handle the customer's queries easily. Like you often hear, oh, my system is not working or my system is slow, or you, you were sent to the wrong person. Let me transfer you to the right person, basically. So which delays customer satisfaction or actually not, uh, you know, basically kills a customer satisfaction, basically, and which leads to bad outcomes at the end of the day. So the customer touch points 
are multitude in nature, basically. And the agent comes in at various po- at various points in the customer journey, and they can, they ought to improve that customer experience rather than struggle, you know, with the systems and applications that they have to deal with to improve their customer experience, basically. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. the point of this slide. If you go forward, uh, Ken. So what are the objectives an enterprise has in general, right? They're trying to solve these problems. Customers experience long wait and hold times. There's an inconsistent experience. I go to the website to get service. I'm shoved into an FAQ uh, page. Basically, go read all these FAQs, figure it out, basically. And then when I call the contact center, you know, I'm shoved into a menu structure, essentially. Again, inconsistent experiences. There's limited self-service options. You know, I, I don't want to talk to an agent sometimes. All I want to do is change my plan with my cell phone provider from, from plan A to plan B, basically. So why are you making me wait on hold to talk to an agent? And then there's minimal personalization in that service that is, is provided. On the employee side, you know, if I'm an agent or if I'm an employee, I mean, there's data in so many places. There's poor IT and HR responses to my needs to do my job. There's minimal self-service. And there's a ton of routine tasks that I have to do where my creativity, my skills are not being used. From an agent side, the biggest issue is how much can you train an agent in a classroom, basically? I mean, we all learn by watching other people, basically, or somebody assisting us while we're doing our jobs. That's not provided today to an agent. We shove them into a classroom, we teach them, we make them listen to calls, basically. And there's an inundated number of queries that come in, which could be automated, basically. And why is that coming to me? What are your hours of operation? You know, when when should I pay my bill? Things like this should be automated. An agent should be used to deal with the more complex stuff that requires some analysis. So you use the analytical skills and the creativity of the agent to satisfy the customer, basically. And there's no context. You know, Kane Sims called me. I know it's Kane Sims, but wh- who, what did Kane Sims do, do with our brand? Did he call yesterday? Did he go on the website yesterday? What did he buy? I have no information, basically. So I'm gleaning all that information from you to service you, which is a waste of time, basically, which could be resolved much more easily. And the infrastructure and the tools are so archaic. I mean, these are so difficult to change in the current world of call center technology that, you know, the, the agent is given the worst experience of all, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, the sales guys get like a modern CRM, but the agent gets like a horrible, you know, UI application that they have to learn and wade through, basically, which they cannot, you know, live with as they go forward. Mm-hmm. So this leads to, you know, either a good outcome if you get it right or a poor outcome if you get it wrong, essentially. So let's move on. Mm. And some of the the agents even actually have to use like the uh, directly accessing the kind of back end of line of business systems often. So it's like you've got all of these disparate systems that sit behind the scenes. And whenever someone calls, that's where the answers are. That's where you can transact or do things. And so the agents end up getting a raw deal all over the place because they're then going into one system to the next system. There's even, I've seen cases where literally people are spending time on the call with the customer on hold while they copy information from one system and paste it into another system. It's mad. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, there's been a question, how does AI improve all of this, right? So IDC ran a survey and came out with these results. Customers or enterprises said, we believe AI can, you know, improve the customer experience. 45% of them think that to be the case. Reduce average handle time, which obviously reduces cost. Improved automation or call deflection, which is about 18%. Higher competitiveness, that's an important factor. You know, AI can be a competitive differentiator, both in sales and service. Human agent efficiency is about 12%. And and, and today I'm going to make the case that all the factors in embracing AI, not just call deflection or reducing average handle time, it's providing an assistant to the agent to make the agent uh, much more efficient. 
and lowering operational costs and faster complaint resolution, which happens if you are able to improve the agent experience overall. So the data tells you that at least some percentage of customers believe that reducing average handle time, making the agent more efficient is the goal of AI. But let me now present to you how that's accomplished. If we go to the next slide. Okay. So if you look at uh, core, you know, we essentially believe that contact center as a service is the new thing for contact centers. But all it is is, let me take my mess on, which is on-prem, and use a mess which is on the cloud, provided by a cloud provider of a contact center software, basically. So the reality is, while that may make, you know, contact center management more efficient, basically, it does nothing much for the customer experience or the agent experience. So we believe that an AI native contact center is the way to go to optimize the customer experience and the agent experience, but also help the operations teams that manage that contact center more efficient as well, basically. And let, let me explain how that is accomplished, basically, if you go forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, first and foremost, you know, if you're going to deploy AI, you've got to be able to deploy it in multiple channels. We support over 35 channels where we can deploy a virtual assistant, basically, which is customer facing, basically, in addition to if that customer ends up through any of those channels with an agent, provide the agent the ability to handle the customer query with a virtual assistant that's available to the agent. So this architecture is something that everybody is trying to deploy, except that this architecture of omni-channel, basically, or multi-channel, is being deployed primarily from a customer automation standpoint, basically, not necessarily from an agent automation standpoint. So we go forward uh, to the next slide. One of the key things to understand which contact centers have not done as efficiently is what, can, what should we automate? What should go to an agent, basically, and actually, if it's a call, you know, which ones should reflect a chat? So if you take some examples, a routine, routine query like hours of operation or something very routine, you obviously want to automate. If a customer calls and says, I want to cancel my service, you want to send that to an agent to see if the agent can convince this customer to stay back or get feedback as to why the customer has a change of mind, basically. But then if the customer calls and says, I want to change my address, you don't necessarily need to send that to an agent. That's a very routine task, you know, but it's easier to capture that address if we deflect them to chat. And in chat, we let the customer type their ad new address so that the, the voice transcription doesn't get it wrong. Basically, and you capture the right address and you complete that call, essentially. So upfront, you upfront by with some thought and with the right technology like what we have with, with Smart Assist, which is our AI native contact center as a service offering, you're able to decide you know, what things go to an agent so that you're not inundating with the agent with either routine stuff or things which like should be, should be handled in chat, basically. You're only tell, sending them the things that they can add value, basically. Mm, That's mm. a key element. Then going so forward, Sorry, would you, would you say then that, that phase one of any kind of solution in the call center that, that is rooted in trying to help agents is to take away some of that kind of like, you know, the, the low hanging fruit, so to speak, the, the Q&A, and then also, secondly, using these additional channels to where, the, where for some use cases where the technology might trip up, like email addresses and stuff like that, use kind of a, a multimodal or omni-channel kind of interface. But basically, phase one is to take some demand away from agents in the first place. Are you understanding that, right? Absolutely. You automate and you deflect to a channel where it's easy for the customer to deal with the automation and complete what they want. I mean, how many times do people call, you know, again, a cell phone provider saying, I got overcharged, hmm. basically. I think if awesome. you call <laughs> most people, basically, you know, that's the biggest thing you call a cell phone provider for. Yeah. But setting, if you send that to an agent, you know, that trying to determine which line item in that bill the customer thought he was overcharged is just going to suck up time. Hmm. Let the customer identify that 
to a chat bot on chat and provide the reasons why they were charged more than they usually are for the line item. That's not something that the agent needs to necessarily open the bill, get to that point in the line, into the in the bill, be able to read it, understand it, and then be able to reply to the customer, basically, because it's a mm-hmm. standard explanation. Maybe you made some international calls. Maybe you added somebody new to your plan. Whatever, whatever it is. So it is important, really important, to think about where do I use my most expensive and most valued resource in the context of the customer experience, and where do I provide instant, immediate, you know, useful help through the automation that's available to the customer mm. that I can deploy to the customer, basically. Yeah. So if you move forward, then okay, now that you've decided what comes to an agent, what kind of use cases can this be deployed for? So you can deploy that from a customer experience standpoint across all the verticals. We've we've seen this interest in agent assist, you know, for healthcare, for insurance, for telecom, as we've been talking, and clearly for banking, where there's a lot of transactions that happen. Travel is a big element. How many times do we call our airline when the weather is bad and my flight is cancelled or my flight is late and I want to change my flight. I mean, mm. so again, there agents can use a virtual assistant to help the customer. Same thing with retail. But we're also seeing, interestingly, even to our surprise, that enterprises want to give a virtual assistant to the service desks that they deploy, you know, within the enterprise. So if I'm, if I'm an IT guy, basically, I'm not going to know every single way to reset a password for every application and every system. I'm not going to know how to unlock every application within the enterprise for an employee who, who needs something or get access to an application. I'm not going to know how to order a laptop or a server or whatever else some employee needs for their job. But an assistant can help me service that employee much faster. And that applies to IT, HR. And interestingly, we're actually seeing this in procurement, you know, and procurement processes mm. are so complex so that the procurement people need an assistant to help them, you know, first implement the procurement policy, but also be able to pull up information quickly to service the the person who's trying to procure something within the enterprise. Mm. Mm. So this has applicability both within the company and customer facing as well. Yeah, it's interesting now how the what this kind of one would say force but i think the better word is enable enables organizations to begin starting to codify some of their processes rather than existing in people's heads and it being part of the agent's training which is this or or, or a procurement officer's training you know day one this is our process which never seems to be written down anywhere you know i used to manage a bunch of business analysts and all all they did was go around documenting processes because nobody kept them and so it's an opportunity here it sounds like correct me if i'm wrong for wherever you're utilizing this technology or wherever the opportunities are it gives you the opportunity to then start codifying some of those business processes so that the agent can manage that consistently each time, right? Yes, not just to codify it, but make it less of a thing that the agent has to remember and less of a thing that he has to be trained on, that the virtual assistant can help the agent execute that very quickly, mm. basically. It's, so it's less about memory and you know opening a document to be able to learn something, you know, based on what the customer or the employee needed, either the call center agent or the service desk agent is quickly able to use the virtual assistant to resolve it, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So moving forward, this is again a survey that was run by ICMI and then Microsoft provided a report on this that 74% of customer service leaders acknowledge that they don't really empower their agents very well, basically. 74%. That's big. Basically. (laughs) I mean, why not? I mean, that's a key, that's an opportunity for something like agent assist. And then 26% of customers report that, hey, I talked to this agent, they did not know how to help me, basically. So it is a clear problem. You know, it affects agent morale, but it affects your brand and the customer experience. So that's why the, that's why this technology 
makes sense to be able to deploy for your agents to make them happier and therefore make their customers happier essentially mm. 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 perfect that i can't believe that 74% of people uh, believe that they're not empowering their agents is criminal almost <laughs> yes so what what do the agents spend time on right you know they like you said the first one on the top left duplicating data app to app you know copy here paste there essentially 25% of the time they're focusing on what the customers needs are 15% of the time it's post call you know processes oh now the call is done now write a write down a summary of what happened in the call you know you know put a disposition code on it tag mm. tag this information so that we can do analytics basically and then some of the time they're trying to find well i can't help you i don't know who to who can help you let me go find somebody to help you and come back to you essentially they don't even know who in the company can help that customer <laughs> and the largest percentage of the time they're searching for information you know they are wading through application screens to get to that enterprise data to search for that information that they have to give to the customer basically well what if you know you can shrink all of that and take that blue section and make it most of their job basically mm. that's 75% of the time they're focused on understanding what the customer needs understanding the customer and being able to service the customer and the rest of it is done by a virtual assistant basically and that's the mm. goal essentially mm. so how do you do that let's let's move forward and see how you can do that you can do that through ai powered virtual assistants basically that in real time you know sit beside the agent and listen to what the customer says either in call or in a chat and be able to proactively execute what the customer says and not require the agent to do the execution so here's a key element i mean if you think about agent assist and all of the marketing that's coming out a lot of companies who have come out with something like agent assist focus on what's called next best action which is a wonderful term but really what the virtual assistant is doing is if can you're the customer and you stated a problem to me and i'm the agent the virtual assistant is saying okay i heard what kane said mr agent now you got to go do these five things it's a guide basically mm. but still the agent has to go do those five things essentially but why if the virtual assistant heard the customer understood what the customer needs and actually executes that whether it's a search whether it's answer answering a question or it is executing a transaction and i the agent i'm just watching basically as my assistant is doing what the customer needs or or intervening if the assistant got it wrong basically and taking over or guiding the assistant rather than the assistant guiding me to go in a certain direction then i am more efficient basically the customer is getting the information very quickly rather than all the time that i would have spent you know wading through the information to answer the customer's question and mm. that's what an agent assist uh solution ought to be basically it is not a guide it is a fulfillment agent it does what the the agent would do manually automatically basically mm. and the mm. agent only takes over when either the assistant doesn't understand or it's too complex a situation where you know the agent needs to glean more information from the customer manually and be able to do some things manually so you're bringing in automation in the form of an assistant for the agent i mean imagine does your twin kane if you're an agent sitting right next to you basically and i'm the customer and i'm talking to you and your twin is heard it, hearing it and your twin is doing most of the work and only 20% of the time you're having to intervene that's what an agent assist is all about mm. essentially in in our definition and that's what we brought to market you know uh, to make this a solution in the market Right. Interesting. Maybe that's a nice time to to do this first poll that we have, which is asking for those of you tuning in, uh have you deployed an agent assist solution as Raj has been explaining? Uh you can answer yes, 
no, but I'm thinking about it, or no, I'm just kind of interested in, in learning about it. Uh, while, while we do run that poll and people are voting on that poll, Raj, it sounds then to me that the next best action agent assists, which we've seen some examples of, are missing a massive opportunity. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, next best action is a substitute for poor training. That's all it is. Mm. So if the customer asks, asks something, the agent not knowing what to do is all it's solving, basically. A yeah. true agent assist not only understands what the customer is asking, but actually goes and does it. For example, I'll tell you, I'll give you a simple example. If you're calling a bank and you call the customer, the got to an agent and said, I want to transfer $500 from uh, savings to checking. So my virtual assistant, my agent assist, bot, heard that. I heard it because I'm the agent. But the bot went ahead and did it, hmm. basically, and came back and gave me a message telling me to tell the customer, the transfer is complete, the confirmation number is 12345. So I am just relaying that message to you, basically, the, if you're the customer, the agent, the assistant, actually did the work. So mm -hmm. I didn't have to open a, a transfer screen and put in $500 into the checking field, I mean, the savings field and the, the checking field and actually execute that action, basically. Yeah. So that's oh. the value. Yeah, that would be perfect because the bot is obviously going to be able to do that a lot quicker than the agent is anyway because it's using the APIs rather than screen switching from different systems and stuff like that. Um, that's wicked. We've, we've saw the votes on, on the poll is that uh, out of everybody who has voted, we've got 24% of people uh, that are tuning in have deployed an agent assist solution. That's actually higher than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting that many people to have deployed this stuff. Um, We've got 38% of people that are saying no, but thinking about it. We've got a couple more votes coming in, so that's actually 27% of people now have deployed. 36% uh, of people that have said no, but they're thinking about it now. Uh, and 36% of people have said no, but they're just interested. Um, and it is an interesting, it is a, definitely an interesting topic. Uh, so maybe we'll come we'll come back to that um, in a moment. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, couple of questions. Maybe this is actually a good time for Aravind's question, which is, uh, you kind of alluded to it, but can agent assist be compared to a digital twin? Well, sort of, yeah. I mean, we're not creating a, a twin of the agent, of the human agent, basically, because then what you're saying is the twin would only have as much knowledge as the human agent has. You're creating a twin of the best possible agent you could ever have, <laughs> basically. So, you know, if Kane is the agent, agent uh, Kane is going to have a companion who's the best agent that, you know, lives in the contact center in for that particular use case ever. Because that, you know, companion is going to have all of the knowledge of all of the policies and the answers to questions and the ability to do a transaction and be able to pull up information from backend systems and provide it, essentially. So Kane now needs to be trained on the complex use cases, hmm. like, you know, somebody wanting to cancel their account, uh, somebody interested in new products. So Kane is more of a salesperson now who's doing an upsell or a cross sell, or Kane is dealing with a very complex situation, basically, which the companion is not yet trained to do, basically. So I wouldn't call it a digital twin. I would call it, you know, an expert companion. Hmm. Nice. Uh, thank you for that question, Aravind. And if you do have any other questions, everybody, please do stick it in the Q&A. Uh, we will have time in a couple of minutes for some Q&A. Uh, Raj, are we moving on in this presentation? Yes, let's uh, just uh, finish up on this presentation. Um, I mean, we talked about a lot of this. The other element which is very important is, you know, while I'm an agent servicing a customer, I could sense the customer is getting frustrated. I can sense, you know, that uh, some emotion. But I'm also busy executing things on screens and doing things. So since my you know, expert companion is listening to what the customer says, it can 
you know, promptly saying, hey, the customer is getting angry or disgusted or scared or is happy or whatever. So that I, while I'm doing the work on behalf of the customer, can react accordingly to the customer and make that a better experience for the customer, essentially. So mm -hmm. sentiment can be measured by the virtual assistant in real time by listening to what the customer says much more than much better than the human who's busy doing work is able to sense it and then adjust during the call to make that call or chat a much better experience overall. Mm. So that's another important element here. The last element I would say is the wrap up. Okay, now the call is done, basically. What, what do I have to do now? Well, today, depending on the industry, depending on the use case, anywhere from 30 seconds to three to five minutes is spent by the agent, summarizing mm -hmm. the call, tagging the information, getting a disposition code, and certain industries like banking and healthcare have regulations, and they have fines that the, the uh, government entities put fines on banks if they don't get the disposition codes correctly tagged to a conversation. So that again, your expert companion or uh, your agent assist, basically, can much more accurately summarize the call, find the right disposition code, if you, if need be, show it to the agent to make sure the agent eyeballed it and then go go forward. So mm -hmm. I know a bank, one of the large banks in the US, every 30 seconds saved of agent time is equal to $6 million in savings for the bank. Basically, just 30 seconds. Wow. So if a wrap up takes like, you know, one minute or two minutes, the cost of it is huge and it's a waste of agent time. We want agents to be talking to customers, not doing busy work on their computers, mm. basically. Mm. So that's the other value that an agent as his bot can bring to bank. Nice, nice. Uh, so the rest yeah. of this is just screenshots about our agent okay. assist functionality. Um, we've covered a lot of this, so we can go to questions, if you will. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Uh, so we have uh, some questions coming through now. Uh, and Andrej is asking, uh, does Agent Assist work with voice? Maybe uh, most of what we've actually been talking about is, is voice. Perhaps you can clarify that. I think that's what you're going to say. Maybe the other question is, does it also work with chat? So does it work with chat and voice? Yeah, actually, it works with voice and chat and email and social, basically. So, so if you think about an agent assist uh, bot, in voice, you can have the voice stream that comes from the customer, you know, piped to the agent, but also forked and piped to the bot. Now, there you would run speech recognition for converting it, converting the voice from uh, speech to text and then run that through NLP, you know, in our platform, and then be able to execute what the customer asked and screen pop on the agent desktop. And it could be any agent desktop. We provide one of our own, but it could be Salesforce Service Cloud, Zendesk, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, or it could be a custom uh, agent desktop that the customer built, or it could be one provided by their existing contact setup provider like a Genesis or a Cisco or whatever. But on that desktop, you would have a frame on the right hand side where the bot will put a message. Say, okay, I got this transfer done. Here's a confirmation number that you want to relate to the customer. So the agent would see that and then relay that to the customer invoice, essentially. Mm. So it also works in email. So if you receive an email from a customer, that bot will first you know, receive that email, the same bot. It will read the email, find the intents, and do one of two things. If there is one or two intents, for example, and it, it has the ability to execute those actions, again, answering a question, giving out information, and providing it or doing a transaction, it will do it via email, or it will route it to the right person, right agent, who would then be able to answer that email, you know, with some suggestions from the bot about the information that it gleaned from the email. And same thing with chat. Chat, of course, is is easy because it is already in text. You know, the chat goes, the chat message from the customer goes both to the agent assist bot as well as to the agent. And then the uh, agent sees what the bot, uh, what the message the bot wants the agent to send to the customer. And with one click, 
they would send it to the customer. So the agent really is not doing any typing, which is mm. the biggest issue with chat, which is that agents are having to not only go into application screens and find information and do that sort of thing, but is all they're also having to type the message to the customer, basically. So if the message comes to the agent already typed up by the by the virtual assistant, he would just press a send button and it would be sent to the customer. Hmm. That's a it's a real killer that to be honest, because you also got compounded on top of that with live chat is just like agents being throttled, you know, like managing loads of chats at the same time. I don't mind calling out Virgin for their terrible service on live chat. You can just tell that the person, you know, it's not their fault, the person who's actually having the conversation with me, but you can just tell that they've got must be 10 chats open at the same time 15 minute response times and stuff like that because they're trying to do all this stuff for me they're trying to do it all for 10 people at the same time going for various different systems typing in all the responses and you can tell as well because you can see it when they're typing and they'll start typing and they're typing for five minutes probably because they're halfway through typing then switching to quickly finish off typing at somebody else and then back to you and it's just a complete nightmare you know so all of this stuff sounds i love that concept of the the agent assist bot actually being transactional because you're right most of the agent assist examples certainly that i've seen have all been around faqs next best actions you know guiding agents which kind of does help still i think especially if you're a new agent and you've just started having this agent assist kind of help, help you learn the ropes and stuff like that keep the conversation consistent but having the bot do the transaction at the time is absolute genius because it really is starting to get to the real crux of where the time is taken, which is typing, using different systems, and all of that kind of manual effort that doesn't add value to the call, you know? But that's, here's another thing I want to bring to bear. Uh, when a customer calls or goes into chat, you know, there's obviously only some things they're going to ask. You know, for example, with the bank, they're going to find out their balances, information about their transactions, doing a transfer, doing a payment, whatever the case may be. So in the conversational AI world, there's been a lot of focus, which is one of the primary use cases, to automate you know, that interaction in chat with a chat bot or in voice with a voice bot. Hmm. So you're already building a bot that interfaces with your backend systems to pull up balances, to do a transfer, to do a payment, whatever, essentially. In our uh, Smart Assist application, our contact center as a product, basically. The bot that you build, which is customer facing, is the same bot that actually turns around and starts helping the agent. Right. So so when the customer interacts with the bot and he or she may have given some information, you know, date of birth, they're interested in transferring $500 from savings to checking, for whatever reason, you know, they press zero or the the automation bot decided we need to send this to an agent. So the, now the, that same bot is helping the agent, so it already has the context, basically. It already knows mm -hmm. the customer's balance and you know he wants to do a transfer and from savings to checking, basically. So when the customer starts speaking to the agent, it doesn't need to go get more information from the customer if it doesn't need to. It just goes and executes the transaction. So you're building one bot with a certain um, a set of intents and functionality that is that you're going to put on voice, on chat, and the 35 channels that we support, you can pick the channels that you want, which is customer facing, but the same bot, you're putting it on the agent assist desktops, basically, so you're not building a separate bot for agents and a different bot for customers. Mm -hmm. So we uniquely do that in the agent assist world. So the two unique things that we do you know, one build effort, basically for automation and agent assistance. And the second that we do is basically the fulfillment on behalf of the agent, rather than just providing next best actions. Mm, yeah, that is that is definitely unique. Um, that's really good. We've got a couple of technical questions, uh, not too technical, but but worth worth mentioning. Um, around, the, I suppose they're very, fairly similar around, one is, it just says anonymous attendee, so apologies for not being able to call you out. Uh, anonymous attendee, how can we handle, uh, in addition to sentiment, how can we handle sarcasm, or can an agent assist bot handle sarcasm? Well, so you have to train the bot to recognize sarcasm. Right. I mean, obviously, I mean, there are some obvious sarcasm 
uh, utterances the bot can be you know pre-built on but you have to train the bot to detect it so we provide a framework within our sentiment analysis uh, engine the ability for a customer to train their bots in addition to the general identification of anger joy disgust there are like seven parameters that we provide and those also can be trained with you know examples of what is considered anger or what is considered disgust or fear or whatever essentially you can create your own parameter in this case sarcasm basically and then train the bot to detect it with mm. some training utterances or contextual utterances basically which will detect sarcasm and not take what the customer said literally but detect it as something that you uh, you detect an emotion but not an instruction you know sarcasm usually comes in the form of a disguised introduction instruction but what it is actually meant to be a sarcasm it's a mm. comment as opposed to an instruction essentially so that's how you do it with an app platform Mm, interesting. Um, and last question we have is, uh, what's the accuracy like? Oh, we've got two actually. Uh, what's the accuracy like with voice? And what's the process for dealing with things like accents and tricky accents? I'm assuming it's probably the same whether you're building a front end uh -huh. bot or an agent assist bot if it's the same kind of capability. So what's the approach to, to training, things, training it on accent, accents? Well, there are two things here. First off, uh, voice means it has to go through speech recognition. So you have to pick the right speech recognition engine. Within Smart Assist, we support pretty much every support speech recognition engine. Google, Nuance, Microsoft, IBM, DeepGram, VoiceGain, NVIDIA, and the list goes on. Basically, with our infrastructure, it's already pre-integrated with all of them. Each of those speech recognition engines give you different models. You know, uh, a US English model, a, a UK English model, or an Indian English model, or whatever. And they also support varied number of languages, basically. So depending on your use case, depending on your audience, you pick the right model uh, that is appropriate for the audience. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there's this whole, whole concept of speech adaptation that we've built into our platform, which is that, let's say you came in as a customer and said, I want to transfer $500 from checking the savings. And I completed that. And the next thing you say, I want to pick a credit card. I want a loan or I want to uh, get a credit card. Then the, the bot is going to send a message to the agent to ask the customer, you know, which kind of credit card do you want, basically. So at the same time, it sends a message to the agent to ask the customer. We also send to the speech engine, you know, the possible thing the customer could potentially say. You know, let's say the bank has you know, uh, a silver card and a gold card and a platinum card. Basically, those are the choices. So we feed that ahead of time to the speech recognition engine before the customer says one of those so that the speech recognition engine is more attuned to to uh, listen to that, listen for that, and more accurately transcribe that, essentially. So you improve the speech recognition engine by using something like Smart Assist, which has speech adaptation built in, basically. Mm. So that's how you make speech recognition much more accurate. And then you feed that through your NLP, which is within our platform, where you have your training to understand the intent and you execute the dialogue. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, we're on. We're on. We're on time. We've got time for maybe one last question, which we have. Uh, and what I'll do is, while we answer that question, I'll run the final poll, basically, which is for you lot who've been attending. Thank you for your time so far. Uh, thinking about agent assist, there's been a lot of people on the poll there who said that they haven't deployed one yet, but they're thinking about it, and some others who are just generally interested. So this next poll basically is asking for you personally, what is the next best thing that you can do to further your interest? in this agent assist technology. Uh, you can always grab a demo with Core AI, absolutely. You can vote for that one if, if you would like that, or a free consultation from Core AI around how agent assist might be uh, helpful for, you, for yourself and your business. Uh, a proof of concept for those of you who are kind of, you know, further down the line and you're kind of ready to do something, uh, or do some more of your own research, and I'm sure we'll be able to uh, point you in the right direction for that as well. So please do stick a, stick a vote uh, on there, and, and we'll get to that. And while people are completing that poll, Raj, last question we have, 
have here is uh, when the agent assist bot is operating in parallel, so it's listening to the caller and you've got the call handler listening to the caller as well, uh, how is it for latency, especially if it's going to be doing transactions and it needs to go away and do stuff to then tell the caller, the caller might just be pausing on the phone and having to wait or whatever, what is it like generally for, for latency, is there much latency or, yeah. or not so much? No. So we can show a demo that there's literally, you know, sub second, you know, 100 to 200 millisecond latency in this journey. The caller said something in voice, it went through speech recognition, transcribed to text, went through NLP, the bot then went to the backend system, executed the transaction, constructed the message, and displayed on the agent desktop in the agent assist frame. So if I'm the agent, I heard the caller say something, and I, within 100 to 200 milliseconds, I see the message that the bot gave me to tell back the caller, essentially. Mm. Mm. So when you think about it, what is the alternative? The agent listens to what the caller says, understands it, wades into these screens to go find that information or do a transaction, basically, interpret what the screen says to the agent, and then be able to, in their own, own words, relay that to the caller. So the instantaneousness of agent assist is a much more pleasurable customer experience and agent experience than the traditional experience today, which has tremendous latency built in because the agent has to do all the work. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, while the poll's still running, please do vote on that poll if you haven't already. There's probably about uh, nearly 70% of people that have so far. Um, one, one final, final, final question, and this will be the final one because we are over time. Uh, uh, thank you for the questions. Thank you for asking the questions again. You're welcome. Uh, who builds and trains the agents uh, and how long does it take? Well, it depends on your use case, right? I mean, uh, it's like agent assist uh, or a virtual assistant is an application at the end of the day, basically. So our platform, the core.ai XO platform is a no code platform. So business people are the ones who define the functionality, design the experience and generate the dialogues. Your technical people come in to add the API endpoints to the dialogues because they're the ones who have access to those APIs to your backend systems. So if you take an example, if you have a virtual assistant or an agent assist that has like, let's say 50 FAQs and five or, ton, five or 10 transactional dialogues, I mean, with a combination of your product people or business people and some technical people who provide the backend API endpoints, you could get that up and running in a few weeks to a couple of months, basically. The training is done by uh, usually your business folks, your business analysts, product owners, and if you have historical data, we could use that for training, they, or they could use that for training, basically, or you hire natural language trainers to be able to do that, basically. In our case, our customers either do it themselves, and we have something called Core.ai Academy. If you go to academy.core.ai, you know, there is online about 50 courses today, more coming, where you can learn our platform, you know, zero cost, anybody can go in, open an account, be able to go through those courses. And also there's a certification there for you to learn our platform. Uh, and you, customers go through that and, and then do it themselves. We have a professional services organization that does it for, on behalf of customers. And then we have a whole plethora of partners like Deloitte, uh, Cognizant, Virtusa, TCS, Capgemini, Genpact, so on and so forth, who have built practices in our platforms to be able to provide services. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, one of the questions on the poll was, or one of the suggestions was to go and do more of your own research. It sounds as though academy.core.ai is where people should go if they are looking to learn a bit more about this stuff. Is that right? Well, so academy.core.ai today has courses about how to build a virtual assistant and be able to deploy it and manage it, basically. It doesn't yet have courses on specifically how to deploy an agent assist capability. Although the building of an agent assist is no different, the deployment element may need a conversation for us to help somebody to understand how to deploy it. But we are coming out with more courses 
where people can learn how to deploy it also on their own. Perfect. <clears throat> Perfect. And check out VUX.world as well, because we've got some content on there as well on Agent Assist. Um, but yeah, perfect. That is uh, that is fantastic. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure, Raj. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, definitely k o r e dot a i. Go there and check that out if you are looking to explore this a bit further. You know, there's definitely a reason why Core AI is being listed as a Magic Quadrant leader from Gartner, and so do do go and check it out. Raj, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. It's really appreciated. Thanks, Ken. Thank you for the opportunity. Really no appreciate problem. it. No problem at all. Uh, and that's it. The recording of this webinar will be sent to you in an email over the next few days. Uh, there'll be a write-up of this as well, which we'll share with you also. And look out on LinkedIn if you're not already following myself and Raj or Core AI or VUX World, because we'll be sharing a bunch of highlights and all that kind of stuff that you can share with your colleagues. Please do subscribe to vux.world forward slash subscribe to get invitations to all of these webinars like this. We'll be doing another three over the course of this year with Core AI, delving into all kinds of different areas uh, of the platform and of the industry with Raj and his colleagues uh, sharing the tricks of the trade and the best practice for designing, developing and deploying conversational AI. So please do go there, vux.world forward slash subscribe. So thank you all for joining. Thank you again, Raj, for joining us. It's been absolutely amazing. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.